morning and welcome to this week's Your Soul Matters broadcast. The Your Soul Matters broadcast is a ministry of the House of Deliverance Church. I'm your host, Tatiana Cody. It is my hope that this broadcast and the message you're about to hear will inspire you, encourage you, and convince you that your soul truly does matter. It matters to God. It matters to us here at the House of Deliverance Church, and we hope that it matters to you. Let's welcome our speaker who will be delivering today's word, Minister Courtney Johnson. Thank you. I'd like to start by telling you this story. Early during a mother's pregnancy, she decided privately to abort, abort the child. After all, it was an unplanned pregnancy and the father was missing in action. action. The day of the mother's planned abortion, the abortion clinic called the wrong number. The lady that answered the phone listened to what they had to say, and then she politely declined, stating she had changed her mind, she had a change of heart. She did not want to continue with the abortion. Later on the, that day, this mysterious woman ran into the woman who the call was intended for. She urgently encouraged her not to have the abortion. So what the clinic ended up doing was they called the neighbor to this mother. The neighbor happened to be the mother of the pregnant woman. So we move forward, this child is inevitably born. It's a girl. Watch our world. <laughs> this girl experiences her shares of the worst and the best of life. To share, she was almost murdered before she was five years old. She was bullied during elementary school. She became extremely sexually active throughout her middle school years. Seeking validation, love, worth, purpose, she got caught up with the wrong crowd. You know the types. She became heavily affiliated with gangs, drugs, drug dealers, the fast life. She got entangled with violence, recklessness, and self-hatred to the point she didn't care if she lived or died. She secretly suffered through multiple miscarriages before the age of 17. Then she suddenly had a life-changing experience. Something happened that was drastic. I'll tell you about it later. She became new. She became better. She was different. She had a hunger now for life and adventure. She cared about herself. This newness gave her hope, validation, worth, purpose, and the approval that she so desperately craved all her life. At the age of 19, she married her childhood love and got pregnant a year and a half later. Seems like she was now living her dream. But on her second year wedding anniversary, she had another miscarriage. Yet again, she's now faced with suicidal thoughts. She became homeless. Eventually, she was accepted into a domestic violence shelter. Three years later, she divorced that man of her dreams. She divorced him due to infidelity and differences. Fast forward 12 years later, the year is now 2020. In the height of the pandemic, confusion, chaos, uncertainty. And this historically dysfunctional, lost, and destructive girl is now a young woman. She has been called into the ministry. She is charged and entrusted to preach about the goodness and the truth of Jesus. I am that woman and this is my story. In Ephesians, the Apostle Paul writes that we were chosen in him before the foundations of the world to be holy and without blame. Jeremiah the prophet records that before I, being God, formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So, you see, I was unplanned by my parents, a mistake, but I was known, created, and formed by God. This is why I use the word inevitably, she was born. 
So it seems that the odds were stacked against me before I even had a shot at life. But God had a plan. Amen. Now, before you go on thinking, well, what's so special about her? Or why is she so special? Pump your brakes. Uh -huh. Romans 2 and 11 states, for there is no respecter, or sorry, for there is no respect of persons with God. Which means that he had a custom-made journey for me. He has one also for you. As you rehearse and recall the parts of my, share, of my story that I've shared with you, let us go into today's scripture verse. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. That is Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. Now, those, those verses had a lot of information in there, a lot of things. Uh, the reason why I shared my story in the way that I did was to show you that sometimes we think we have to have it all together before we can take the step to God. Sometimes we have to believe or we believe that we have to be born from a certain area, have come from a certain pedigree. But as you see, I came from some worse situations, some horrible situations, but yet God called me to the ministry. He anointed me. He gave me all that I would need to help someone else out of their darkness, someone else out of their pit. So today's title is Beauty for Ashes. One of the things that God gives us is beauty in exchange for our ashes. Now, when I think about that, that doesn't seem like a fair exchange. Someone giving you something beautiful in response for nothing. Who wants ashes? The only time we typically keep ashes is for when loved ones are deceased, cremated maybe, and we keep their ashes. But other than that, we don't go around collecting ashes, but God does. He wants your ashes. Whatever your ashes may be, he has propositioned you to try him, to test him, to see won't he make your life beautiful. I stand before you today, not beautiful just on the outside, I know that, but beautiful on the inside because God allowed me to lay down my ashes before him. That shame that I dealt with at an early age, that uh, feeling of rejection, abandonment, lovelessness, I mean being an unplanned pregnancy and your mother wants to abort you and your father doesn't have uh, want to have anything to do with you but God said even before I was formed in the belly he knew me so he created me he I wasn't a mistake I may have been man's mistake but I was God's intention I was God's purpose you are too if you feel like I have felt you are not too damaged you are not too bad. You are not unfit. You have all the prerequisites, which means you have all the requirements that you need to qualify to come into this great God, to come and receive this love, to come and receive his forgiveness, his repentance. Who else do you know will give you beauty for your ashes? Ashes that mean nothing. Ashes that cost nothing. Okay, so let's go on. As I stand before you today, in the beauty of holiness, as I said, is because I gave God my ashes, my failures, my mistakes, my embarrassments, my sufferings, my trouble, my very life. I came to Jesus. That drastic change that I mentioned earlier was me receiving salvation. Came to Jesus naked, saying, this is who I am. This is what I've done. I don't know what you can do with it, but I'm willing to give you a try. I was all in. You too have to be all in. You have to forsake everything that you know, everything about your life that may be good. Forsake it all. Give it to God. Let him burn it up. Let it become your ashes in exchange for God's beauty. Are your ashes too heavy for you today? 
Do you want a relief? Do you want to get rid of yourself? You at the right place and the right moment in time. God is ready, he's willing, and he's able to receive you. Sincerely release yourself, let go of all of your ashes, everything that makes you you, and watch God make you beautiful. My prayer and my hope and my desire is that you, like I have done, become beautiful in holiness. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. I truly hope the words you just heard were a blessing to your soul. As the minister said, God wants your ashes, whatever they are. God wants to beautify you. He wants to heal you. He wants to remove the damage that you feel, or you feel like you're damaged, but God wants to save you. Come to Jesus. If you are looking to learn more about God, come visit us. Information can be found on our website at hodchurch.com. If you would like someone to talk to or would like to receive prayer, please call 1-800-741-SOUL or 1-800-741-7685. We look forward to seeing you next week at the same time for another inspired message and messenger. Until then, don't forget, your soul matters. Amen. Amen.